Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. We're then to what episode 5 now. Uh, so I have read the comments, and people are calling for music to be reduced in volume or removed altogether. I've opted to reduce the volume. It may be evident slightly in the background. Hopefully this is a uh, good level. So at least when I'm not talking, people can hear a little bit of music. And it also keeps me from getting too bored. So anyway, I wanted to talk further about logistics. Now, we've not really touched upon rail freight as such. Well, rail and freight are different things, but we've not touched upon it as such. Uh, now, what I want you to look at is uh, basically, when we're going to the rail mode here, you can see there's different numbers. So 9, 4, 3, 3, 2, 5, 2, 4, 2, 0, and 15. Now, what does this mean? This is the capacity of the railhead, like the amount that it can actually move via rail. So if we can take a look here, the transportation cost of this unit is 5,747. So, they could move via that rail line, and that would use over 5,000, um, well, use over 5,000 capacity. Uh, therefore, that means, with the 5,000 capacity gone roughly, that would leave only 10,000 capacity available in the logistics phase to move freight. So basically, how things work is, uh, unit transportation takes priority and then the remaining capacity is then used to move freight. So, that does change things quite a bit, really. So you can see here that we have, obviously, the rail network. And we can see how it's been used. So we can see here, rail usage is zero. Slide rail usage over here. Well, if we compare it over to England, where you can see it, rail usage is uh, definitely up there. Uh, by the way, blue lines represent um, supply being, uh, well, freight being sent by port. White lines represent freight being sent from depot to depot, i.e. from port depot to non-port depot, or just depot to depot, basically. Red represents supply being sent from depot to units, so that's something to clarify. Uh, so we don't have any highly stressed networks. But we'll take the one just outside of London here, just outside, say, the Albans. Uh, so we can see here the rail usage is 5,000 tons. So 5,000 tons have been moved down this rail line at the moment. Also, we compare that to here, where zero tons being moved via rail, 399 tons of freight being moved via rail from here to here. Uh, which is interesting, so that's travelling up the network or travelling to these ports, well, depots, basically. Uh, so how it works is basically, um, let's say, well, the Western Allies have a higher port, uh, sorry, depot capacity, and port capacity. It, it does tie into ports as well. Uh, functionally, it is double for the Western Allies, as opposed to the Axis, who have half the capacity available to them as the Western Allies. Uh, so it's obviously affected by different things, namely if you have like a port, the amount of, uh, the level of the port, the level of the railhead, it packs on the capacity. Uh, so let's say, for example, you have, um, I don't know, two, like level two port and level two railhead. That might work out to be about 50,000 tons of capacity. Whereas for the axe, it might only work out at 25,000 tons of capacity. Uh, so that's a big difference. Now, how it works as well with the rail is uh, basically you move until you run out of uh, movement points with units. Well, as the freight moves up. Well, it moves uh, basically infinite up to a point of 50 hexes, which doesn't sound infinite, but it's, it's, it's complicated. Um, basically, if we take a rail over here, right, okay. Uh, so you can see a lot of this freight is being sent down this one rail network. So if I select over here, can we find out how many hexes away that is? Not particularly, but mm, let's see. Yeah, you can see that's over 60 hexes away. Uh, what that means is basically freight can travel 50 hexes within a single turn, so i.e. a week. And it'll take a long time to move all the way up there. That's representing thousands of tons of freight being moved up through that rail line. And uh, yeah, that's how that works. But basically, the further the distance, uh, the more penalties incur. So basically, the higher the loss of freight. Now, freight represents basically supply, ammunition and fuel. And what this means is uh, when it actually gets to the unit, the unit will then turn it into what it needs, or a depot will turn it into what it needs. Uh, so let's say that um, over here the Catania. So let's find out. Apparently, I don't have anything in the port, or it might be due to the fact I'm in this mode. Let's see. 
Okay, so we have nothing in the port at the moment. Now, if I find out from the log how much is being sent here. So deselect all, and we'll select freight. Now I want to find out about Catania. Right, Catania, Catania, Catania. Right, okay, so freight. Uh, so Catania received 120,050 tons of freight. Uh, now what that means is... Is that 120,000? No, sorry, uh, 12,050 tons of freight. Oh my, I am terrible at reading things here. In my defense, there's no commas or anything like that, so it's bound to happen. Uh, but basically, they received 12,050 tons of freight. 8,372 of that was used. A further 3,107 was shipped out. Truck use, 2,066. Now, what that means is all this freight has been sent out to the um, units that have been supplied from here. So all these units are being supplied from container. Now, if we take a look at the supply... Not supply priority. Have that for just so it doesn't reset. Right, supply details. So... Apparently this core isn't being supplied by Catania, which is rather interesting. Let's see, uh, I need somebody who's supplied by Catania. Right, now you're being supplied by Catania. So, let's see, received... So you received 71 tons of supplies, so 71 tons of supplies have been consumed. Hmm. Okay. So you haven't received anything this turn. I need somebody who's received something. Okay. Hmm. Interesting, so we're not quite getting the freight out there. If they're having to use their own intrinsic support. Uh, so how it functions is basically, within three hexes of a depot, units will suffer a um, high malice. Now what it means is basically it's assumed that within three hexes that animal transport is basically used and obviously animals requiring like fodder and uh, food of that nature. So that increases the actual demand and the penalties. So basically you're using twice as much freight to be able to move this, i.e. freight being converted to supply or whatever is used to uh, fuel said vehicles or animals. And after that, then they are assumed to be used in trucks. Now, obviously, trucks do break down, and obviously, they do take up supplies as well, i.e. fuel. Obviously, it takes fuel to drive a truck and drive it back. So that's interesting. So we need to get these rail lines moving up here, ASAP. Uh, which is good news, because that will happen, and they'll be within uh, just about one hex of supply. But there we go. That's how it works. Now, um, what I want is I want a unit on a depot. Let's say this one then. So if we take a look at the supply depot. Okay, so you received 95 tons of supply. Now what that means is you received... Well, actually, considering that you're on a depot, you've just taken it from the depot. It's somewhat complicated. It's trying to find a good example. It's a very complicated system, really. It's a very, very complicated system. Well, it's not that complicated, but it is and isn't. Okay, let's see. Right, freight received, I believe this represents. So 160 freight from London. Now that is 160 tons. Uh, so what happens here is uh, freight is basically any resource on... Well, it's, all, it's basically all three resources at once. And then the unit converts it to what it needs. So that's basically like how freight works to a um, greater depth. I've explained that rather badly, but it's because I'm doing this later at night, and therefore I'm not quite in the right mindset to do this. Uh, but that's somewhat how things work. So, I've also opted to increase difficulty. Uh, so at the moment, in general, well, the general difficulty is challenging, but I've opted to increase it to impossible. So that may, in fact, take effect next turn. I'm doing that just so we have a true challenge. I don't want things to be easy at all. I really want to showcase how the game works. And I can do that by having a very, very challenging AI. Bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Now, a further point about supply is basically with units that have under 60% of their supply, they will attempt to resupply during the actual combat phase, uh, phases, or during the actual phases. Uh, so what they'll do is they'll use their trucks to try and pick up supply to obviously resupply the forces. 
It's uh, very complex, I'm still learning about it myself, and one day I believe I will do a series of tutorial videos, but obviously that will come in time once I do understand the logistics system to a greater degree. It's not so much not knowing how it functions, but it's more like trying to explain it. It's a very complex system. Incredibly well made, incredibly well made. Okay, let's see. I mean, the thing is, we may not be able to take um, Axis forces head on as such, unless we build up strength, which is fine. That's how things had to be done anyway. Right, so we can see a uh, front of rain has moved over Sicily, um, which is okay. I mean, we've only yet to take Messina. Indeed. Uh, but going back to the rail capacity, I can see that the Lionel Mojo's had 15,000 tons of capacity. Uh, it's really something to bear in mind, like uh, with Messina, we only have, what, one rail line going from Palermo and one from Catania. Now that means that we can only transport so many tons of freight along that rail line. So what, ideally what you need to do is try to look for um, a way to increase the amount of rail lines going down towards where you need it. To increase the amount of freight that can travel. Okay. Uh, so we're also going to put the oil and fuel up there. We'll put the vehicles and armaments lower on the priority. Um, lower. Okay, oil and fuel. Uh, we'll put manpower down to low and resources down to non-existent. And we'll go with that. Now, let's see. I don't believe we have the preparation to launch invasion of Sardinia as of yet. Uh, 25. No, we can't go for it as of this moment in time. Obviously, I can't check until we get into the proper phase for that. Okay. Uh, now, we do really want to have supply coming into Palermo. Now, Palermo is a fantastic port. Oh, also, FYI, uh, the anchor represents um, locations that can receive freight via ship in which is good to know. So you can see that we could receive uh, freight in all of these different locations. We don't have a depot over here, so we're not going to receive anything. But that's what that means. The wheel? I can't... I think it means it's like where it's been sent from. Uh, let's see, I do have the actual... Uh, ba -ba -bum. Living manual up on the other screen here. I'm just going to find something out just so I can explain it. Where are we? Hmm. I should have looked for this one. It's, it's a lot of things, really. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Ah, something to do note about uh, with supply, fuel, and ammunition is basically uh, it's taken from the pool. So you have freight, let's say, we'll have uh, freight sent from uh, Syracuse. Now, say Syracuse has 1,000 tons of freight. That freight is sent to Catania, that freight is then moved on towards these units. Now a unit requires 500 supply, so 500 supply will be converted from that um, freight, 250 fuel, so 250 fuel will be converted, and uh, then 250 ammo will be converted. So that's all the 1000 freight being converted, uh, but basically you need to have that in your fuel, in your, uh, basically in your fuel stores, your supply stores and um, ammo stores. So like over here, supply, ammo, fuel, and yeah, supplies in your pool, so fuel in pool. So this is where it's drawn from. Otherwise, it, it wouldn't exist. You need to have it in the pool for it to be sent, and then, yeah, you need it in the pool to be able to use it. It basically represents the fact that uh, once freight is sent out, it doesn't just magically disappear. It's still there in the pool as such, but it's just converted at the other end, and then taken from the pool once more. So, yeah, again, it's, it's a little bit hard to explain. It's not really, it's just the first time I've explained it, and I'm just trying to think of the best way to explain it, in, uh, just in a way that is easy to understand. Okay. Right, okay. So, a uh, star symbol, let's see. So, star symbol represents national supply source. So, this is basically where a permanent depot is that cannot be disbanded. And is a source of freight tonnage to be disputed to other depots around here. So Liverpool, Sheffield, um, not London, but probably London. I imagine it would be counted as one as well, for definite. 
Uh, basically, they are sources of permanent supply. They send it to other depots. Then we have the ship wheel. So what this means is basically it is a port supply source. Uh, this is a port that can be used as a source of freight to be shipped via naval transport over sea and ocean hexes to another port. Uh, so this is a depot port that sends its resources out over the sea to other ports. And a... Uh, let's see down here in the system. And the anchor represents a port depot. This is a port that can receive freight over water. That's what it represents. Uh, so you have freight being sent from these and then being received at these. And then you have the rail line. Now, this indicates a rail yard depot. Uh, da -da -da. Um, this is a depot that receives freight via rail. Yeah, over here. So that's what that means. So, a little bit complex, but fairly simple once you get the basics down. Okay. Right. Uh, let's see how the... De uh, how the... Things are laid out at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to keep with this at the moment. Now let's see. Tactical Air Mediterranean. Ground support. I think Air Superiority can take a uh, step down and we can go for ground support. I do need to hit these units even harder. I absolutely do. Uh, we're also going to increase interdiction. Now what that means is basically if we take a look over here. So interdiction levels over here. And... Yeah. Now, what that means is basically interdiction levels out at sea represents like naval patrols. So things traveling through here, i.e. freight and other things, will be interdicted. Uh, you can basically blockade a port via air interdiction if you have so much of it. I'm not entirely sure what the level is required to do it, but it's quite a significant level. But it's achievable. I think we'll have the interdiction up there then for the tactical air force. Uh, so we're going to set these air directives and then we'll have our forces move. To make use of the airfields available. Okay, and then move them. Okay, let's see how that's been changed. Okay, that's remaining the same roughly. Uh, so we can see here the bombing of the city, strategic reconnaissance. Yeah, so we're targeting the area around Paris again, bombing the cities. Okay, sweet. Let's go ahead and see how that turns out. Ah, right, so they have a... Uh, so they have the 4th... The 4th Fulchkem Jäger Division. Interesting. Alright. Uh, challenge in Steel. Hmm. Perhaps I'd have to restart the game to have that change in difficulty. I also did have a request. I do need to check that, actually. Uno momento. It was basically a request to see reinforcement, so let's find it. Um... Okay, just out of curiosity, can you take a look at the unit reinforcements tab between the July 1944 and October and see if the 3rd Goodick Mountain Brigade is there? Okay, uh, the brigade was attached to the 1st Canadian Infantry Division and they both fought in the Battle of Rimini, 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 whatever, Hermione, at the Battle of Hermione. Okay. So 1944. Let's see. Between when and when? Uh, July and October. Okay. We'll just look for them all and then see if it's anywhere there. Uh, we'll start from 1944. Uh, this is just a viewer request. I'm going to do this. Right. Polish. Hmm. Lots of US tank forces and British forces. Commonwealth forces will be in there as well. And then obviously Allied. Hmm. Interesting. So we have some Italians. Chemical mortars. Colonial Free French Infantry. Ooh, heavy fueled artillery. 8 inch field guns. Ah, there we go, there's the heavies. 7.2 inch guns and the 5.5 field guns. 
Love it, go for broke. I do love the attention to detail. That they have their actual um, division insignias. That's pretty cool. Colonial Sashores. Okay, trying to scan through this, make sure I'm not missing it. There we go. I have Gurkhas from the Raj. Um, ba, ba, ba. Yeah, there we go. The Third Greek Mountain Brigade. That's some really nice attention to detail there. That's very, very nice detail. And something I wouldn't really have looked for, so that's pretty cool. Sweet Brazilian infantry. Smoking snakes. <laughs> I love that. That's some nice attention to detail there. Okay, so we can move on. And um, apologies to those who had to sit through that. But that was interesting to see the detail there. The directions are going ahead. So we do have a lot of forces, a lot of German forces of the Wehrmacht in southern Italy. Uh, so what we will probably do then is invade to the north. I did also have somebody suggest a battle plan. I shall bring that up should I find it. Hmm. Ah, here we go. From Mr. Kyle Divan. Oh, it's an interesting plan, it's a very bold plan. Here we go. So, this is a plan from Mr. Kyle. Now, basically, I'm not actually sure what that means, but basically, land in forces over here. So, we got Geta and Salerno. Then, possibly uh, Toronto, basically, towards Toronto. So, phase one, phase two. Uh, it's an interesting and bold plan. The only issue I can see here is really the lack of rail lines. I mean, sure it's nice to secure sort of the now, but uh, I think it might be... It's something we'll have to look for a location that is actually superior. I mean, what we could do is, uh, once we're able to take a look at the actual map is, uh, possibly land further to the north, using either Corsica or Sardinia as a launch pad for the invasion. Okay, aircraft loss was actually quite low. Okay, let's see what damage we did to the Axis factories. Right, um, that's practically not out in Hamburg. Yeah, not had a good amount of the heavy industry here. Oh, well, that's gone. Dusseldorf hit hard. Okay. Now I can see Italian. And then in France, uh, Prague over here, such as Czechoslovakia. Uh, Palasti, I can't uh, Pilsen. Um, Poland. Okay. Frame. Actually, I don't know how the East Front is, actually. Let's see. Uh, Upper Commando de Her. Right. Not entirely sure what this means. But we can see their total. Hmm. Hard to say what that means. Okay. So you can see here that we have uh, 13,998 tons of capacity, uh, port capacity in Italy, i.e. Sicily, that we occupy. Um, hmm, unless this, well, this is unused capacity then. That's interesting. This is available in this moment of time, I believe. Okay, army freight data. As you can see here, da, 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 um, right, 8th British Army uh, received 3,042 tons of freight. The 5th US Army received 480, the 2nd British Rival Army 9,973 tons, 7th uh, US Army 2,884. Okay, so I think the issue is the distribution from a higher level headquarters. Supply is flowing, but it's not flowing effectively from the army headquarters. Uh, so we do need to improve this situation. Okay. Now, your transportation cost is 20,000 tons. Could I have you moved? I could have you moved to Syracuse. 
which is fantastic that we have 40,000 tons of capacity available there. Absolutely delicious. Ah, shit, we had a transport hit. There's a lot of men lost, quite a number disabled. Either way, it improves things a lot. So we'll take you off the ship. Right, there we go. Now I'll have you move up towards here. So what do we actually have in this? We have... Um, not a whole lot, really. Not a whole lot. Right. The latter. I right, so I'll change to the different scenario. Okay, so we can see that we are having... Um, freight move from that depot to these other depots. Okay. Yeah, I suppose the way to think of it is a wheel is an exporter, an anchor is a importer. Uh, these forces are resting up and trying to repair their table of equipment. Uh, let's see. Have we been able to change the difficulty? Right, so it's still challenging. I'll have to see what I may be able to do to increase that difficulty. It may be that I have to create like a new save or something like that and then it goes from the new save. Um, either way, I'm not entirely sure, but I would like to increase the difficulty just to increase the amount of challenge. Okay. Now, what is our preparation level? 25 remaining still, so we need to get that level. Uh, now, let's take a look at Italy itself then. So, can I take a look at logistics? Mm, not really. Right. Naples would be superior as a logistics hub. Obviously, it's going to be heavily defended. I mean, that'd be a nice uh, depot over here, to be honest. It has like four rail lines going through it. That's pretty sweet. I need a lot of port in a area. There's not a great amount of ports in a small area. We have Anzio over here. And we have four ports over here. Uh, the issue is obviously the terrain, but this terrain could be used to effectively defend the landing locations. Hmm. Actually, this is quite a nice area. So, we have a level 2 port over here. We have a level 2. Anzio is a level 2. 1. 2. Yeah, level 6 port over here. Hmm. So what it may be, then, is potentially we start our invasion just south of Rome. Now, then, I would like something um, to draw. So we'll indicate our invasion here. So say this is where we land in this hex. What we could then do is uh, we'll have uh, defensive, or at least initial penetration represented by pink, I suppose you could say. Uh, I mean, if we were to sort of uh, move to this area here, try to secure a small landing location here. Uh, what we would have then is we would have the river to anchor our defences to the north, as well as, obviously, um, here's going to be difficult due to the fact that Rome is only flat terrain here, plains, but then to the east we have hills, we have mountains over here, and then sadly only the plains here. But then in the second phase, we could extend that down to here, potentially capturing the port over here, but then just just embracing the extra defensive terrain and that sort of uh, functionality. Uh, let's say, for example, that we were able to take Roma. What we could then do is expand our control out to here, for example. Now, obviously, we would want to occupy these hexes to gain their defensive um, abilities, so we'd have to oops, go back. Let's see. We'll go back here. So we'd want to occupy these areas. I think what we'll do then is we'll have them drawn in a different color. Let's see. Uh, so defensive locations that we are keen to occupy will be drawn in green. There we go. Obviously, I could have that continue on down there. Okay. So, in this area, we would have a level 2 port here, level 2 port here, level 2 port here, and potentially level 2. I believe it's level 2 port here. Uh, so, that would give us 4 ports in a small area. I mean, within, like, what, 1, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 hexes. So within 120 kilometers or 120 miles, I forget which one it is, we, I think it's kilometers, we would have about four ports, which is good. So a port would be available within three hexes if we were to divide our units equally, which is fantastic. Um, now, if we were to count the amount of rail lines in the area, so to say that we would take all of this, we would have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and potentially seven. So we'd have seven rail lines within this potential area. Obviously, I would love to secure this one here and gain an eighth, but that's good. That would allow a lot of freight to be able to move. Now, if we were to take a look at the actual airfields, we can see here we have a level three. So that's one. Uh, so one level three, three level twos, then one, two, three, four, five level one airfields. Possibly six, unless I didn't count that one. I can't remember if I counted that one. Um, but I think I favour this invasion area. Also, chiefly due to the terrain, which is another consideration. Like, if we take a look... Obviously, this is going to move here, so let's see. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, let's try and get it... There we go. Yeah, so obviously you can see here... The terrain in this area is actually a hell of a lot smaller. I mean, this would require a lot of planning and a large amount of forces, but I believe it could be pulled off quite easily. I do appreciate the plan down here. It's very ambitious. It's also somewhat historical. Uh, but I think the payout over here is much higher. There's a lot more opportunity. The surrounding terrain works to our defensive uh, advantage. But obviously being the invader, we do need to have terrain that favours an attacker. So it's good to land in planes. Okay, so that was a long-winded explanation of why we're going to land in this area. I think the initial landings... It depends, really. Where would I want my initial landings? There's a lot to be said for the different areas. So let's see. We'll compare. One more. There we go. So. The initial landing areas. We'll have uh, three selected as possibilities. So uh, one, two, and three. So landing area one has uh, the benefit of the hills over here to the north we also have the river running all the way down here which gives us the protection to the east as well we have a port over here but we are quite somewhat distant from the other port there's only a about two level one airfield within reach or very close reach however there's a second well there's a level two airport over here uh, airfield i should say now, London Area 2 is much more confined, but that could be quite dangerous if we find it difficult to branch out or we're, like, hemmed in. That would mean the London Area is under threat. Uh, we have a level 2 with a level 1 airfield immediately there. A level 2 airfield not far out, and a level 3 airfield not, air, uh, not far out. Uh, London Area 3, we have a port. Also, I forgot to mention that we have a mountains area here to hinge our defences. We have the river to the north, and we have hills here. Uh, but from Rome and from the north over here in this direction, we're open. From the south, we're open. Uh, but if we were to land in this area, I would say this area probably has the best defensive advantage. I mean, we do have the swamps over here, and then we have the hills, the mountain, hills, mountain. Obviously, to the north, it's completely open by about 20 kilometers, but still not bad. I mean, only 20 kilometers compared to what's over here, and it's pretty much 20 kilometers over here as well. Obviously, the enemy would be able to move units to Rome quite quickly. So that's another consideration as well. Uh, London Area 1 would be able to cut the rail lines from the north, which is where the vast majority of the German and Italian reinforcements would come from. Ideally, we'd like to have a mix. We'd like to be able to cut these rail lines here. The easiest way doesn't really exist, mostly because um, I could cut this rail line here, but they still have this one. Uh, but if I cut this rail line here, that does cut off a lot of the rail traffic. But I would still need to cover this one too. So that's a very convoluted and not very well explained explanation of land and area ideas. I think I will choose this area. I think I'll probably land in area 1. 
due to it being larger planes, uh, more planes available, also the amount of rail available in the area. Uh, we could even branch out a little bit further to snag another two level two airfields, should I be ambitious enough. Also, we'd be able to um, block these two rail lines here, so we'd only leave this one here and this one here. I mean, obviously, this is where the vast majority of reinforcements are going to come from, so blocking these off quickly would be a very advantageous move. Also, where the vast majority of the freight is coming through. So that would mean that, uh, let's say, that these lines are cut. That would mean that the vast majority of Axis freight to Italy is coming down this one rail line. And that will be very, very bad. Right, so we'll wipe that and we'll continue. So, that was quite the ramble there. But it's important. Okay, so we can't do much about this. So what we'll do then is instead we'll... Um, We'll, we'll post some British forces over here. And we'll have other forces ready to move out. So, you belong to the 30th Corps, so the 30th Corps will be responsible for holding this area. Uh, 13th and 10th Corps, right there we go, 30th Corps. Okay, so 30th Corps, turn refit off. Okay, 30th, 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 30th. There we go. The 7th US Army needs to start moving back. Wait, why are you attached to 7th US Army? You should be attached to the Provisional Command. Where is the US Provisional Command? Hang on a minute. It seems like the um, US Provisional Command was withdrawn and instead they're now relegated to the 7th US Army, which is over here, so no wonder they're not receiving the supplies they require. Uh, so we have the 2nd US Corps over there. Interesting. Interesting. I didn't actually notice when that happened. Hmm. Okay, well, that's something of a setback. Um, though... Let's see. So I do have the American core over here that I could put to great use then, actually. Uh, capacity 20,000. 22,920. So I don't have the capacity to move it yet, but what we can do then is we can have it moved to there. So I want to have the forces that were before under the command of the US Provisional Corps Command. We need to move them towards Syracuse, and then they can be moved onto that new command. Uh, that's British Armoured. So that's fine, we'll have it work alongside the American Armoured Can't Arts. Okay. Hmm. Right. Convert these. Great shame that I can't com well, convert these networks for now on. You're over here. Move you there. Okay, so that's the rail line connected up over here. Obviously, it just needs to be moved up here. Uh, but what we'll do then is... Move this way. Right, how you commit it to this command over here, the second US call. Okay. Right. I don't think it's actually worked to improve the capacity here, so I don't have a temporary port. It may be required by units landing or something like that. I'm not particularly sure. We do have a temporary airbase here. Okay, either way, things are functioning. Let's see. Alright. Still not receiving that freight.
Right, you're sourcing from Syracuse, though. So I think the demand on Catania is too high at the moment. Uh, so this is what we need to do then. We need to have the other rail lines made ready and then have freight sent this way. Uh, so if we take a look... Uh, freight usage which pretty much drops off around this area. I think it's mostly being collected by vehicles, actually. And this isn't, this isn't very good. We need to have freight uh, move via sea to Palermo. The Palermo yeah, is not that damaged, actually, right now. Let's see. So if we reduce the priority of these depots, as uh, so well, level 2 priority. Level 2 priority. Level. Oops. Level 2 priority. So we have uh, priority at Catania and Palermo, which is good. Which is where we can get most of the supplies from. And having the supplies over here at Palermo would. Um, vastly increase the supply efficiency over here and also having more supply sent to Catania would help us deal with this but obviously the rail lines would allow us to move supply from or our freight from uh, Palermo and Catania so therefore we'd be able to increase it okay hmm start marching back this way There we go, we're starting to move this way so then I can um, have this invasion force move from there to probably Palermo and then we can start to target an invasion. I mean, what I could probably do is start to prepare an invasion around this area from over here, uh, which would be a very good idea. I mean, let's see. Yeah, so for Trapani, it's not going to work too well. Uh, but it doesn't matter, I mean, once we have an import there, I mean, this doesn't obviously need to come out of... Um, it's not, it's not like landing as such, it's not like unloading. So we can have them targeted over here. Then you could move out over here. Right, okay, there we go, fantastic. Uh, so then what we can do is we can move the forces out from here. Awesome. That works extremely well. Okay. I'm happy with that. So then we can have the US Corps move from here, we can have the other British Corps and all the other American Corps. Probably the American Corps with the Armoured. I'd love to get Armoured on the beaches as soon as possible. So obviously the armor is going to be the thing that really holds its own. It's very powerful and it would be great to shield the invasion. Also having the amount of fuel available, we'd be able to strike out and capture these rail lines, cut these rail lines, cut um, Axis freight supplies off to Italy. And it would negate all the issues down here. I mean, this area here, the heartland of Italy, really, other than the, um, I mean, you can see here the heartland of Italia, um, of it, well, Italia, uh, basically here in the north, here, and here. And these are the open areas where people can really build. There's enough room for the agriculture, that sort of thing. Okay, so there's no, no reason to try and uh, crack those nuts, so what we'll do then is we'll create some fortified levels, uh, some fortified zones. So we'll use some admin points over here. Okay, let's see. I would like to create a depot here. Let's see. Right, there we go. Keep refitting. Your table equipment is down, so we need to bring that back up. Right, what do we receive next turn? 7th US, oh sorry, the 740th, uh, 745th US tank battalion. And then we receive a bunch of forces. So, Hussars, uh, Czechoslovakian Armoured Brigade, US forces, self-repelled, very nice. British forces, lots of forces over there. I don't know where they go, but we received them. 8th Indian Infantry Division from the Raj, US Arm uh, Airborne to the 101st Airborne. 
Okay. Right on. Let's see. Battle sites. Area was observed. Indeed, that's been scouted. So you can see here that uh, we had a lot of air interdiction and a lot of air combat. Air interdiction and air interdiction value increases by 14. Indeed. So you can see they do have a number of forces in this area. It's interesting to see that the attacker is the Luftwaffe. So in the area we only had 49 40 mm AA guns. Which isn't much. Okay. Let's increase the amount of AA in the area. So we'll take these elements from the 8th British Rifle Army. Okay, and lock. There we go, so we should increase the amount of AA available in the area. Hopefully increase the air defences in this area as well, which is fantastic. Okay, so victory locations. Um, so, Paris, Cologne, ah, Antwerp. Yeah, it's quite a few, most of them being in, obviously... Mainland Europe, well, continental Europe, uh, Germany primarily. So, I mean, we have uh, Antwerp, Amsterdam, so France, Belgium, um, uh, Netherlands, then the rest of them being in Germany. Interestingly, Berlin is not a victory point. I suppose that's assuming that the Russians will obviously eventually push into here. Okay. So, there we go, not much movement as of this moment in time. Uh, what I could do is actually start to plan this invasion, which is good. Uh, I should get underway with that immediately. Okay. Target. Um, target here. Obviously we need some airborne landings then planned. Well, we'll begin to target that, and then at least we can build up the preparation points and get things moving. Uh, but this is where we'll invade. Okay. Preparation's 25. Okie dokie. Right, so you can see that supplies and fuel were taken from the pool. Let's go ahead. There we go. So the access is sending out their supplies. Uh, Missing is going to be a tough nut to crack. I mean, not only is it urban hex, it obviously has a port there, so we can't starve it of supplies. But I don't intend to take Messina head on. I really do not intend to do so. It'll be a conquest later on in the campaign, really. I do want to feel try to move forces into Messina. I think the issue is the Axis has in Sicily is it only has a toehold. It can't stack anything else other than three units as an absolute maximum. So that really does 
restrict the axis in terms of counterattack significantly. I mean, we do have two hexes there that are both hilly terrain, so it's fantastic for the defense. And obviously, I'm happy to just sit there. We have two rail lines right through those hexes. Well, we have a rail line in each hex, so therefore we can receive all that supply quite easily. It's going to go through quite nicely without much uh, wastage. So that works out for me. Now, I do want to see if we are receiving more, or at least actually receiving uh, the ship freight at Palermo. Okay, so we're going to execute the same directives. Okay. Hmm. Let's... Um, let's go interdiction. Well, not interdiction. We'll start going with um, rail yards, I think. Though, but again, it doesn't matter for the time being. Right. Though what I could do is I could start going for the railway. Now what that does is basically it um, increases, it incurs a penalty on that rail line. So the amount of freight being sent down that rail line takes up more capacity because there's less capacity available, in a sense. Um, I mean, you hit the rail yards to reduce the overall capacity. You hit the railways to reduce the capacity temporarily. Uh, well, temporarily. Okay, so we'll set these directives. And, yep, once that's set, we'll go ahead. There we go. And execute. I mean, to support the invasion of May 92, what we could do is we actually use airborne forces to land on key rail lines and basically sever them from the north and south, perhaps. And then at least we could try to isolate the area around Rome as much as possible to give the invasion the best chance it needs. Lots of reconnaissance. Very good. Losses on average. About four to five hundred. Um, they start getting high once they reach about 600, 700. Anything higher than that is obviously quite an obscene mult. <laughs> Shoot them out of level 3 airfields in Britain, my god. about average losses. Okay, fantastic. I can find it easier just to check. Right. Um, and eight. Okay, yes, we are receiving supply over here via ship. That's fantastic. I mean, all of these ports are receiving freight via sea. Which is obviously, I want these ones to receive the most Palermo and Catania. Okay, so we have a lot of fuel in here. I mean, we did have a lot of supply and fuel from what we captured, which was amazing. Okay, preparation is underway. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay, just spam that so I can actually get the... Actually, I don't need to spam it. Let's move you out for the moment. Okay. Sweet. You can he see here, supply is actually rather, rather poor. Obviously for the um, forces here. So we'll have you assigned... I can't have you assigned? Can you only be assigned to top level headquarters? Ah, uh, that would seem so. Okay. Right, preparation 36. 30 here, 36 here. Interesting. Okay, let's move these forces out. sent back. I will right, we'll do that once we have the capacity. Okay. So once again, 40,000 tons. Mm, fair enough. Have you subordinated to the 7th US command? Subordinated to the um, seventh, sorry, for, to the uh, fourth U.S. command, uh, U.S. core command. Okay. I mean, more than likely, I probably would be better off near uh, Palermo, but that's fine. It works for me. But I could do with having this um, headquarters move up this way, more than likely. Um. Hmm. Right, we have you over here. Right, so you over here. Interesting. Forgot about this. We have some more US armored. So you're under the command of some U.S. armored. Okay. Hmm. I don't like the fact that these units are receiving supply from all the way over here. They should really receive them from either Gila or from Palermo. Obviously, there's only so much capacity on the island and so much supply. Seems like the vast majority of the supply at the moment is coming from Birmingham. Okay. Now, forces in contact with the enemy, i.e. one hex, basically in contact with an enemy hex, and enemy force in that hex, uh, they spend 1% of their ammunition per turn, and this represents basically like lower level combat. So, these forces are always going to be using more ammunition, they're obviously going to be taking some attritional losses due to low level combat. And the likes. Okay, so that's something to explain. So these forces over here are obviously going to be able to refit quite a lot easier. Uh, they're going to spend each phase trying to just gain all the um, replacements. 
So, I mean, what I probably want to do is focus it. Uh, so, we'll turn off uh, refit for the British forces. And have it focus on the American forces for the time being, get them up to table of equipment standards. Right, okay, yep. Um, <laughs> morale isn't great, 58. Uh, what should it be? 56, 57. Right. Right, morale. Yeah, morale isn't great. Obviously, our morale has been artificially lowered by the difficulty standards, but that's fine. Okay, so we're going to leave it here. It's been a, um interesting episode, I suppose you could say. Uh, somewhat of a boring one. I hope you guys appreciated the complexities I was trying to get across. I didn't explain them very well. I think in the future I will go ahead and create a series of uh, one of the worst tutorial videos, i.e. I'll probably take a look at the ones that come equipped with the game, like in the video tutorials, and perhaps do like a superior version, not to my own horn, but at least one that's easier and more in-depth, perhaps. And one that just shows things to a greater degree. So, if you guys would like that, then do let me know. And obviously I will take a look at doing that in the future. But until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye for now. If you've enjoyed this episode, do consider supporting myself and the channel via a subscription, sharing the channel, sharing the video, or a one-time monetary donation on PayPal, or becoming one of my patrons. It does make a great, great difference. Also, if you enjoyed this game, well, the gameplay of this game, then do go ahead and support Matrix and Sniveling by purchasing one of the West today. Until next time, goodbye for now.